How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Rancho Fundo. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Rancho Fundo, a map with pleasant climate that resembles some regions of Brazil with small and medium sized fields and more pronounced relief. But it is also possible to venture out as a farmer to enjoy large, flatter areas and it also is possible to open fields or expand those that already exist. It is also possible to work with wood buying an area that is already has many trees. To sell your productions there is a cooperative, three factories, Grain South, Rancho Grain Mill, Supermarket Bread Bakery, Bales, Sawmill, Sugar Cane Factory, and Country Restaurant located close to the city. The purchase of sales of animals can be done at the animal dealer and you can also buy an area at the lime station for lime extraction to use on your farm or to resell at the sugarcane dealer Sugar. Cal the map has three headquarters already installed. Just buy the land in addition to the ones with two, air, two more areas that can already be found with houses. Have 84 fields, 10 of which are for planting irrigated rice and some areas for opening fields. Two new crops being rice and black beans, personalized animal feed, calendar with Brazilian weather. There are mods required for this map, starting with the Package Mega Silo by Lost Gamer, the Bison Z056 by Hydraulic and Cycliff, Southern Brazil Woodhouse by GainFS, South Brazil Silo Package by GainFS, Flower and Feed Factory by Namag Mod, 3 Disc Plow by Namag Mod, and The Yogurt Factory by Namag Mod. This map was created by Namag Mod and is 548.23 megabytes to download. If we take a look at the map, oops, this is what it looks like. We start out here in the kind of northwest corner of the map at the, uh, at the shop area. We start out by owning farmlands number 17, 91, and 92. 17 is a soybean field, which is in the current state of growing. 91 is your main starting farm, and 92 is two additional fields but with no product in them. You cannot buy all areas of the map, and field prices do vary. If we take a look at starting at some of the smaller ones here in the south west, uh, southeast corner of the map, 51,000, we got another one here for 57,000, 74,000, 138,000, and it just goes up and up and up, 131, 336, 658, we got a forestry area here for 204,000, and then we've got several additional farms as well as some uh, kind of placeable buyable areas out here for 400,000, 209,000 and 453,000. We do start out with animal pens. We have a cow barn uh, with uh, 25 cows already in it. Contracts are available on this map. No production change to start out with and no uh, collectibles for this map. If we take a look at mods specific to this map, starting under the buy menu, we go all the way down to mods and DLCs. You'll see here under Rancho Fundo card, we have tree saplings. So we do have mods specific to this map uh, under this menu. Under the build menu, if we take a look under this and then we take a look under buildings and sheds, we scroll all the way to the right, you'll see here several Rancho Fundo mod. These are mods specific to this map. Uh, there is nothing under silo, silo extensions, containers, tools, but under farmhouses we do have a couple of Rancho Fundo mods specific to this map. Under productions, whoops, there we go, nothing for factories, nothing for selling points, nothing for greenhouses, nothing for orchards, but under generators we do have a uh, windmill that is uh, specific to this map. Under animals there is absolutely nothing under the entire card here. Under decorations and fences, if we scroll all the way to the right, you'll see uh, quite a few over, oh, not quite a few, a mod specific to this map right here. And then under lights, nothing under here, but under others, we do have the, under decorations, the Rancho Fundo signage. So that is very nice. And then lastly, under landscaping and painting, we do get several additional painting swatches. Uh, nothing, no, I'm sorry, we do have something for trees. We scroll to the right, you'll see several items here that are Rancho Fundo mod specific to this map. And then again, same thing here for plants. So we do start up here at the starting shop, or not the starting shop, the, the shop area. So let's go ahead and check this out really fast. 
we have our shop trigger right here. And because we do start out here with no vehicles anywhere around here, I am going to go ahead and lease a truck. Just like that. And now back here, we make our way around, repair trigger right there. And that's it. That's the only thing that's around this immediate area. And now we're going to start making our way around the rest of this map. Let's go ahead and hop in, pull out a little bit so we can see what's around us. And we're going to start out in this direction. So we're going to just head down this kind of windy, twisty road. And just going to make our way down all the way to the bottom of this quarry here. There we go. And right here, we have the Lime Station Buy Point. But you can also buy the land here, and you can see, look at all this lime that is just stacked up on the corner here. That is a ton of lime. It would be a good little mining operation for you to purchase. And if you want to purchase it, you can for 90, no, farmland number 96 for $46,704. That is cheap, cheap, cheap. And then they have another buyable area that was off to this side here, 97 for $10,000. I think it's just that building over here, if I'm not mistaken. It's this one right here. I, oh, no. A little vein of uh, line that's in the corner there. So you can start out really cheap right over there and really kind of work your way up. So that's cool. So go ahead and hop back in, make our way back up the mountainside. As we continue to go up and up and up. We'll just backtrack all the way up where we came. We'll get out right to here, make a left, and follow this all the way back here to our very first production point, which is right here. The Flower and Feed Factory, $180,000 to purchase this. We'll go ahead and do so. And you'll see, we can make pig feed. We've got the flour, typical flour that we're used to, and fuba. I'm not sure what fuba is. It's almost maybe like a, a, a corn flour, maybe? It's, I kind of guess. Not 100% sure about that, but it is something that you can make here. Inputs are right here, and if we go around the back over here, output right there. Over here, we have the bale trader sell point, and then right next door to that is the animal dealer. Now, you can come to this location and purchase your animals directly from this icon right here. You can also use the same exact icon at the pens and pastures that you have listed on the map. If you use this icon, though, directly, you will incur an additional fee. That fee is associated to a delivery fee. The animal dealer is taking the animals from this location and placing them wherever you have your pens and pastures located around the map. Now, you can save money by bringing an animal trailer to this location and loading into the animal trailer rather than having the animal dealer deliver them yourself. Then once they're in the animal trailer, you can then take the trailer to your pen and pasture and deliver it yourself. Now, to kind of give you an idea, for an adult cow, it's an extra $100 per adult cow to have the animal dealer deliver it. And as you can see, 60, 60 cows, $6,000 plus the $93,000 dollars that it's already going to take so you're spending almost 100k on 60 cows and on this map you have quite a bit more room than that so might be worth to either invest in an animal trailer or to lease one out to be able to save that money so just depends on which one's cheaper and honestly which one you want to spend your time on doing so I'll head back out We're going to follow this road just back here. And this is the sawmill. You can go over here and purchase it for $100,000. We have our input right here, our wood cell trigger here, and our output 
for our wood chips is here. The output for the product itself, though, um, that's actually a good point. Right there. There it is. Found it. Now we're going to head back out. Follow this down to the main drag. Here we'll make a right. Followed by another right. Coming down here. Here we have the sugarcane plant cell point. And then around the back side over here, we have the slurry tanks by point. Continue back out to the main road, heading down the road just a little ways. Now right over here, just over this railing here, that is the supermarket sell point. And then directly in front of me is the bread bakery sell point as well. Now, you know, one thing I just want to double check. Just want to make sure because I listed this as a sell point, but I just want to make sure it's not. Yeah, no, it's just a sell point. Just wanted to confirm that just to be certain. So now we head over here. Go across the street. Now tucked away back here is our next point of interest, starting out with the aged cheese factory for 23,000 you can purchase this and we will do so. And milk creates aged cheese. So that is really cool. Input here and I'll put around the side right next door to it. We have the yogurt factor for 72,000. We can purchase this one. We will do that. So you can create plain yogurt, strawberry yogurt, grape yogurt, chocolate yogurt, butter, and normal cheese. So there's two types of cheese on this map, as you can see. And they are specifically listed as different products. So just because they may have the same symbol doesn't mean that you're actually producing the same exact thing. So over here we have our input and our output. Uh, nope is actually just back here right there and then over there that is the cooperative cell point hopping back in the truck we're going to leave this area hop on the main road and then we're going to be going a long ways out for our next point of interest. And we're just gonna sit here and follow this road until we get to the next one. So it's actually coming up right here. You're starting to see it come into frame there. Off to the left side of the road, we have the gas station right there as we drive right past. Now tucked away over here, right there is the, that uh, it's called the Kaipira restaurant sell point leaving out of here come to us nope nope not this entrance this one right over here right there that is the Feed and Grain South cell point. Just need to cut through it. And heading just a little bit further. Now, one thing I'll say on our way over to the next cell point, be very careful how fast you're driving on this road. You hit these little curbs that are alongside this road and it catches you and it wants to throw you completely for a loop. Trust me, I know this from, <laughs> from uh, experience. Right here to my left is the limestone buyer uh, cell point. Need to leave out of this area and backtrack just a little ways.
And now this is the part of the tour where things get uh, a little bit interesting. Uh, not like anything's going to come up that's going to really kind of knock socks off or anything like that, per se. Um, but the road network is a little difficult to follow. So it's one of those I'm hoping I'll be able to actually make it uh, like to the places that I have marked out uh, without any kind of backtracking or looping or going in the wrong direction. I'm hoping I'll be able to get us there in one kind of go. But as we continue to follow, oops, and I'm already starting to do it. Oh dear, that almost ended badly. As we continue in this direction now, we're going to follow right along field number 57 here. And this is going to kind of loop up and around, heading back towards that road that we were on to see all those cell points and whatnot. But this is just nestled just below the road. And this is what I'm going to call farm number two. Farm number one being our main starting farm, but this farm number two. So take a look at the map. And we started right here at the shop area. We then came down, followed this mountain pass down to the lime station by point, then followed it back up around here to the flower and feed factory, to the bale trailer, uh, trader, and then to the animal dealer. We then came out to the sawmill, then came back out and around to the sugarcane plant cell point and the slurry tanks by point, then came back up. We saw the supermarket cell point, the bread bakery cell point. We then came up and around where we saw the aged cheese factory as well as the yogurt factory and then the cooperative cell point. We then came back out, came all the way down here to the gas station and then to the, uh, I think that's Kaipira restaurant cell point over to the feed and grain south cell point and then all the way out to the limestone buyer cell point we then backtracked all the way back to here where we followed the road down around farm uh, field number 57 to this area here farmland number 75 can be purchased for $175,008 we'll do so and then we get a few pop-ups that come up oh what just happened I did not mean to do that let's go back to our truck we have a silo right here. Our input is right here. And our output, I believe, is just right over here. And then tucked away just on top of this little hill here is our house. It has our sleep trigger, which is directly in front of me, as you can see right there. And wardrobe trigger right there. Got a little bit of storage, a little covered awning right there. And that's it. I mean, not much is going on here on this particular farm. Go ahead and turn around and head back out and about. Now, let's see. Just making sure I'm keeping up with my notes here. We're going to, again, follow this road around field number 57. So I'm doing a little bit of backtracking. You can see here the birds are really loud on this map. Really, really loud. So we're going to follow this. Let's see it. Yep, there we go. So, so far, so good. We're going to break here, head off to the right. And then. turn along the river and now we'll stop right here this is going to be farm number three so we were here at farm number two we then came back out and around we crossed over to this area here up down to here and now we're in farmland number 95 we purchased this for 41,136 so do so right there and we have access to just this house a little bit of land but this house is what we get a sleep trigger and a wardrobe trigger. That's it. That is absolutely it. Small little piece of property. If you're looking for kind of a, you know, bare minimal kind of startup on this map, this might be one of the, I think there's two total places that you could purchase to uh, be able to kind of go about it in that route. So we're going to continue to follow this road going all the way down south here. 
cross over this bridge. We'll follow this all the way over here. And now we are pulling up to the starting farm. We'll go ahead and open the gate here, pull in to about right here. This will be fine. Now that we're here at our starting farm, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. Go ahead and go under the buy menu under our owned items. Under small tractors, we have a Fent Favorite 515C. Under harvesters, we have the FMZ Bison Super Z056. Header for the Bison right here. Under plows, we have the Lizard 3-disc plow. Cedars, we have the Amazon Katea 3000 Super. And under weights, we have the Kloss W1200. And that is it. A very small, very compact starting farm. If we go inside here and through this door, we have a sleep trigger and a repair uh, wardrobe trigger. So sleep trigger is right here. Now, you would imagine coming over here, you'd be able to get the wardrobe trigger. Not, not necessarily true. What I found is that you go kind of on the middle of the bed-ish. you got to kind of find that little sweet spot where it's hiding. I was able to get it up at one point. Oh, there it is, right there. So yeah, you can finagle around with it and you can bring it up eventually, but it's a very thin trigger. Go ahead and hop in the truck. Right here, we have our silo, got our input here, and our output right there. It's also where our harvester is hiding. Coming around the back side over here. Got a little too aggressive right there. Come over here, and you can see this is where our cows are hiding. So we go up here and we can load them in right here. We have 25 cows, room for 120 of them. We got our feed here. I, now the rest of this is gonna be guessing. I think this is where you put in your straw feed. One of these, either this one or this one is for your uh, slurry. Now here's, here's my guesses because it's not clearly labeled. I think this one is slurry. The reason I think that this one is for your milk right here is because of this bench. This bench, I think, would indicate a kind of milking parlor, perhaps, maybe, I don't know. Just a kind of reasonably educated guess. But, go ahead and head back out the gate. And now there's one last thing, even though it's not marked here on the map, that I do want to show off. Now if we go down the hill over here, these are our two kind of starting farm, or starting fields that we do have access to. We have three total, but these two are non-numbered fields. Now if we come over here, I'll go ahead and pull into... Ooh, you know what? I better not do that. I don't know what kind of... Uh, thing will happen if I leave it in there but if you come over here you'll see up the hill uh, right here right here we have this this is a a trigger that allows you to flood the fields so if I turn around and click on that we keep an eye on the field we should eventually start, there it goes, look at that. Nice flooded field, it's not as deep as I thought it may be getting by opening that up, but you can click on it to flood the fields, you can fl click it again to unflood the field, and there you go. So that's all just kind of aesthetic, it doesn't actually do anything for your crops or anything. So if you plant rice in here, you can flood the fields. You don't have to flood the fields. It's not going to make a difference one way or the other. Um, at least as best as I can tell. 
You also get this, this is something else I want to point out just really quick, a little detail. You get this little uh, watermill right here, which I thought was really cool. Uh, leads into this pond with some fish that are just kind of hanging out there. So <laughs> I, th I thought that was, again, kind of cool. Oh, hello. thought that was kind of cool. Got the uh, fish just hanging out in the pond. So anyways. Now we'll go ahead and head back out of the farm. We'll cross over the river right here. And now... We'll head out. We're going to follow this kind of looping around the southern portion of the map. Coming up here, we're going to want to make a left. And here, we'll come to a stop. Let's take a look at the map one more time. We were here at what I believe was farm number three. We then came shooting down south all the way out to our main starting farm where we saw the sleep trigger and wardrobe trigger. We came down to the silo and then up to the cow barn. We then walked down to the uh, field down here that we could flood just to kind of show that off real quick. We then came out of the main farm across the river down and around over to this area here. Farm the number 94 in particular. 58,752 to purchase. And you'll see that here is another house. If we go down the driveway here, go up here, we have both a sleep trigger and a wardrobe trigger. Run back to the truck. Now we need to take in two more points of interest. We're going to follow this around. Now here we'll make a left, oops, without running into the tree, hopefully. And then we follow this down to farm number, whoa, five, which is right here. Take a look at the map one more time. We were here at farm four. We then came up and around and over to here. Farm the number 84 for 147920 Go ahead and do that. Purchase and just like our main farm, we do have another silo right here. Input there and output is around the back side. Right there. And then tucked away inside the house over here is our sleep trigger and wardrobe trigger. We'll go ahead and show those off real quick. So we open up the door. Around this corner right here, we have a sleep trigger and wardrobe trigger. These ones are far easier to access than our main starting farm. Now, we'll hop back in the truck and go see our last point of interest. We'll head back out the driveway. And we're gonna follow this all the way back to the north, almost right where we started. We're basically coming back and doing a full circle around this map. So we'll just fly up there as quickly as this little truck can take us. And now coming up here, it's gonna be coming into view shortly. Right here is our last point of interest. Right in here, this is the ranch grain mill. And that's it. This last cell point is everything here on Rancho Fundo. Now it's time to render my opinion and let you know what I think. Zero to five scale as per usual. I am very confident in saying that this map is very much deserving 
of a 5 out of 5. This map is gorgeous. Everywhere you look, this map has something going on. Just details everywhere you look. Okay, so let's start out with the color palette. Color palette is extremely well done. Extremely well done. It's very toned down, very muted, which is what I personally like to see. I don't like to see maps that are just loaded with colors, tons of wildflowers everywhere. This just feels right. Something about this just feels like this could be a real place or not just a real place but could be like just a very accurate simulator level representation of a given area in Brazil. I I think that that is number one one of the most important factors when you have that kind of really good color palette to really kind of enhance and amplify the map then you go into things like the topography the landscape how it does it look and wow does this map just look absolutely phenomenal you get the canopy of trees all over the place left right and center but then you get all these little trails all these little kind of ways of going around and i actually just discovered this little trail here and it looks like it would take me oh no nope, not quite not quite i thought it was going to take me all the way to this farm here i wouldn't have had to go all the way around but not so but that's okay so the landscape is just absolutely phenomenal the rivers the creeks the lakes the ponds the the palm trees the i don't know what kind of tree that is but that kind of tree just all these different kinds of trees all this different kind of detail is just absolutely gorgeous and again everywhere you look even on these fields that are really huge you got plenty of stuff that's going on around them or in them in this case because look at how much this field just dips into the earth here and it just runs up this hill here it is just absolutely beautiful just everywhere you look and then you got that big forestry area off to my right there i mean this map has a little bit of everything and then you take into account that this has custom crops such as the black beans and the rice this also has um custom productions like th there's a lot of stuff going on on this map and i'm all about it and i think that is exactly why it deserves a five out of five because of everything i've said here and I mean, just the looks, the aesthetics, the new products, the new crops. Yeah, all that stuff makes it a very unique, special map. I like it. I like this map a lot. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, map tour. Not update, map tour. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things. The algorithms enjoy doing to show you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.